Hey, Jake, you ain't gonna believe what just crash landed in your junkyard. Jake groaned, pressing his ancient flip phone closer to his ear. Crazy Pete, I swear to all that's holy, if this is another one of your meth-fueled hallucinations. Ignore, man. I'm clean as a whistle. Well, a slightly used whistle. But I'm telling ya, yeah, there's a bona fide spaceship smoking up your lot. Jake pinched the bridge of his nose, feeling a headache coming on. It was just past midnight in the sleepy town of Rust Bucket, Arizona, and he'd been looking forward to a cold beer and some shut eye after a long day of fixing rusted-out pickups and ancient Buicks. Pete, buddy, pal, amigo Jake drawled, his voice dripping with sarcasm. Unless you're calling to tell me Ed McMahon rose from the dead to hand-deliver my million-dollar check, I'm hanging up and going to bed. But, Jake. Good night, Pete. Jake snapped his phone shut with a satisfying click, tossed it onto his nightstand, and flopped back onto his creaky bed. He stared at the ceiling fan spinning lazily above him, its rhythmic whirring usually enough to lull him to sleep. But tonight, something nagged at him. Damn it, Pete, he muttered, swinging his legs over the side of the bed. This better not be another alien cow abduction situation. Grumbling, Jake pulled on his oil-stained jeans and a t-shirt that had seen better days probably sometime during the Carter administration. He stomped down the stairs of his small apartment above the garage, each step punctuated by a creative curse word. As he reached for the door, Jake paused. What the hell am I doing, he asked the empty room. I'm a 35-year-old mechanic in bumfuck, nowhere about to check my junkyard for a spaceship because the local meth head told me to. This is how horror movies start, Jake. This is how you end up as a cautionary tale on the evening news. But curiosity and maybe a tiny part of him that still believed in the fantastic one out. Jake grabbed a flashlight and his trusty wrench because, hey, you never know when you might need to tighten a loose bolt or bash an alien's head in and head it out into the warm Arizona night. The neon sign above his shop Jake's junkers and auto repair flickered weakly as he passed under it. I really need to fix that, he muttered, making a mental note he knew he'd forget by morning. As Jake rounded the corner of his garage, the beam of his flashlight swept across the junkyard. Piles of rusted car parts, ancient appliances, and the occasional piece of unidentifiable metal formed a labyrinth of tetanus-inducing treasures. It was a place where dreams of restoration went to die, and Jake loved every inch of it. And, and there, in the middle of it all, was absolutely nothing out of the ordinary. Jake let out a sigh that was equal parts relief and disappointment. God damn it, Pete, he chuckled, shaking his head. I'm gonna kill you tomorrow, right after I check myself into the loony bin for actually believing. A flash of blue light cut through the darkness, accompanied by a sound that could only be described as a constipated elephant trying to play a kazoo. Jake whirled around, his wrench raised like a weapon, though what good it would do against laser guns, he had no idea. There, half hidden behind a stack of rusted-out Chevys, was an honest-to-God flying saucer. Well, more like a flying dinner plate that had seen better days. It was about the size of a minivan, its sleek silver surface surface marred by scorch marks and dents. A thin trail of smoke rose from what Jake assumed was the engine, or the alien equivalent of an engine. For all he knew, it ran on cosmic farts and good intentions. Well. I'll be damned, Jake whispered, his wrench clattering to the ground. Pete was right. I owe that son of a bitch an apology. And probably a beer. As if on cue, a hatch on the side of the ship slid open with a hiss. Jake tensed, ready to run though to where. He had no idea it's not like Rust Bucket had a secret alien fighting militia. Unless you counted the group of retirees who played bingo at the VFW Hall. But instead of little green men or tentacled monstrosities, outstepped the most beautiful women Jake had ever seen. Three of them, to be exact. They were tall, easily over six feet, with skin that shimmered like mother of pearl in the moonlight. Their hair, if you could call it that, looked like living strands of silver that moved of their own accord. And their eyes. Jake felt like he could drown in those pools of swirling galaxies. Oh, come on, Jake groaned, throwing his hands up in exasperation. Seriously? Drop-dead gorgeous alien women? What is this? A bad sci-fi porno. The aliens exchanged glances, their brows furrowing in confusion at least. Jake assumed those were their brows for all he knew. They could be specialized antennae for picking up cosmic radio signals. The tallest of the three stepped forward, her movements graceful despite the obviously injured legs she was favoring. When she spoke, 
Her voice was like wind chimes in a summer breeze. If those wind chimes could somehow speak English with a vaguely British accent. Greetings, noble mechanic of earth, she said, bowing slightly. We come in peace, seeking assistance for our, how do you say, totally balk starship. Jake blinked, then blinked again, then pinched himself hard. When nothing changed, he did the only thing a sane man could do in this situation he burst out laughing. It wasn't a chuckle or a giggle. It was the kind of full-bodied, slightly hysterical laughter that comes when the universe decides to play a cosmic joke on you, and you're the punchline. The aliens looked at each other again, concern evident on their ethereal faces. The one who had spoken leaned towards her companions and stage whispered, Perhaps we have broken the human? I told you we should have practiced our Earth languages more. This only made Jake laugh harder. He doubled over, hands on his knees, tears streaming down his face. Oh man! He gasped between fits of laughter. I finally lost it. Crazy Pete's gonna have a field day with this. I can see the headlines now local mechanic goes bonkers, claims alien hotties asked him to fix their UFO. The shortest of the three aliens, though still a good head taller than Jake, stepped forward, her brow furrowed in concern. Are you unwell, Earth creature? Do you require medical attention? We have some excellent tentacle balm that might help. Jake wiped his eyes, his laughter finally subsiding into occasional chuckles. Nah, I'm fine. Just having a minor existential crisis. You know, the usual everything I thought I knew about the universe just got turned on its head kind of thing. No biggie. The aliens nodded sagely, as if this was a completely normal response. The one with the injured leg spoke again, we understand, noble earth mechanic. The first contact between species can be, how do you say, a real mind F. Oh, whoa, or Jake interrupted, holding up his hands. Let's keep it PG-13, shall we? I'm still not entirely convinced this isn't some elaborate prank or a really vivid hallucination brought on by too many late night tacos. The aliens looked at each other, confused. The shortest one pulled out what looked like a cross between a smartphone and a waffle iron. She tapped it a few times, then announced, according to the Galactic Urban Dictionary, PG-13 refers to a human entertainment rating system. It suggests content suitable for primitive spawn aged 13 revolutions around their local star. Fascinating, Jake pinched the bridge of his nose. Okay, look, let's say for the sake of argument, that I believe you're real. That this isn't some elaborate prank or the result of me finally cracking under the pressure of fixing one too many rusted out carburetors. What exactly do you want from me? The tallest alien's face lit up literally her skin began to glow softly. Oh, noble earth mechanic, we seek your expertise. Our starship has suffered grievous injury in our journey across the cosmic void. We detected your establishment of vehicle repair and hoped you might aid us in our time of need. Jake looked from the aliens to their battered ship and back again. He ran a hand through his hair, sighing deeply. You want me to fix your spaceship? All three aliens nodded eagerly. Me, Jake Thompson. The guy who once spent three hours trying to figure out why a car wouldn't start, only to realize it was out of gas. You want me to fix a ship that can travel across the galaxy? More enthusiastic nodding. Jake threw his hands up in exasperation. Well, why the hell not? It's not like I had any big plans for tonight besides watching reruns of porn stars and questioning my life choices. Sure, I'll take a crack at your intergalactic jalopy. But I've got to warn you my experience with spaceships is limited to watching Star Trek reruns and building model rockets in high school. The aliens beamed at him again, literally their skin glowed brighter. The one with the injured leg clapped her hands together. Excellent. We are most grateful, noble Jake Thompson. I am Zilith, and these are my crewmates, Nexa and Vox. Jake nodded, still not entirely sure he wasn't dreaming. Nice to meet you, ladies. Now, let's take a look at this cosmic clunker of yours. As they approached the ship, Jake couldn't help but notice the way the aliens moved. Despite their height and otherworldly appearance, there was something undeniably graceful about them. It was like watching a ballet performed by very tall, very shiny cats. So Jake said, trying to sound casual and failing miserably, you girls come here often. To Earth, I mean. Not my junkyard specifically. Though I guess you're here now, so technically. Nixa, the shortest of the three, interrupted his rambling. Oh no, this is our first visit to your charming little mud ball. 
We were on our way to the Galactic Council meeting on Zeta Reticuli IV when our quantum flux capacitor decided to throw a hissy fit. Jake nodded sagely, as if he had any clue what a quantum flux capacitor was. Ah yes, quantum flux capacitors, always acting up at the worst possible moment, had a 87 Buick that did the same thing. Well, not the quantum part, or the flux part. Come to think of it, it was probably just the alternator. Vox, who had been silent until now, spoke up. Her voice was deeper than the others, with a hint of what Jake could only describe as cosmic gravel. You speak wisely, Jake Thompson. The parallels between your primitive combustion engines and our hyper-advanced star drive are, well, they're completely non-existent. But we appreciate your attempt at empathy. Jake couldn't help but laugh. Fair enough. All right, let's take a look under the hood. Or whatever you call the part of the ship where all the important bits are kept. Zillith pressed a button on what looked like a fancy wristwatch, and a panel on the side of the ship slid open with a soft hiss. Jake peered inside, his eyes widening at the sight. It was like someone had taken the insides of a supercomputer, mixed them with the guts of a nuclear reactor, and then let a cosmic octopus play twister with the result. Tubes of glowing liquid pulsed in time with what sounded suspiciously like a techno remix of Bach's Toccata and Fugue in D minor. Holographic displays flickered in and out of existence, showing diagrams and readouts in a language that made Jake's eyes water, just looking at it. Well, Jake said after a long moment, I can safely say this is a bit more complicated than your average oil change. Nixon nodded enthusiastically. Oh yes, this is our Mark VII quantum displacement engine. It uses the inherent uncertainty of subatomic particles to create localized bubbles of warped spacetime, allowing us to slip between the cosmic fabric like a greased Zorblax through a Neptunian sewer system. Jake blinked slowly. Right. Of course. Silly me for thinking it might be something simple like a broken fan belt or a clogged fuel line he leaned in closer, careful not to touch anything that looked like it might disintegrate him or turn him inside out. So, what exactly seems to be the problem? Zillith pointed to a pulsing red crystal about the size of a grapefruit. The hyperdimensional matrix crystal has become misaligned. Normally it channels the quantum energies of the vacuum foam into usable propulsion. But now, she trailed off, making a sound that was somewhere between a sigh and the mating call of a lovelorn whale. Jake nodded, pretending he understood even a fraction of what she'd said. Ah, yes, misaligned hyperdimensional matrix crystal. Classic problem. You see it all the time in. Uh, spaceships, he scratched his chin thoughtfully. Have you tried turning it off and on again? The three aliens looked at each other, their expressions a mix of confusion and what Jake hoped was admiration for his technical prowess. Vox spoke up, her tone serious. Jake Thompson, your wisdom is beyond compare. Truly, you must be the greatest mechanic on your primitive world. We had not considered the ancient ritual of power cycling. Jake puffed out his chest, feeling a swell of pride. Well, you know, sometimes the old ways are the best ways. Let's give it a shot, shall we? For the next hour, Jake watched in fascination as the aliens went through what could only be described as the most overcomplicated reboot process in the history of the universe. There were chants in a language that sounded like a mix of Klingon and drunk French, interpretive dances that he was pretty sure violated several laws of physics, and at one point, all three aliens had to stand on their heads while reciting what Nix assured him was the quantum encryption key of the universe, but sounded suspiciously like the ingredients list from a box of Cap N Crunch. Finally, with a sound like a thousand AOO up modems screaming in harmony, the ship's systems came back online. The pulsing red crystal turned a soothing blue, and the Bach techno remix switched to what Jake could have sworn was staying alive by the BGs. Zillith clapped her hands in delight. It worked. Oh, Jake Thompson, you truly are a miracle worker. How can we ever repay you for your invaluable assistance? Jake waved a hand dismissively, trying to play it cool and failing miserably. Ah, it was nothing. Just doing my job. Although he trailed off, a mischievous glint in his eye. I don't suppose I could convince you ladies to stick around for a bit. Maybe grab a cup of coffee, swap some stories about the cosmos. I make a mean plate of scrambled eggs. The aliens exchanged glances, a silent conversation passing between them. Finally, Nixa stepped forward, her expression serious. Jake Thompson, your offer is most generous, but I'm afraid we cannot delay. The fate of the galaxy hangs in the balance. Jake's face fell. 
Ah, right. Of course. Saving the galaxy, much more important than breakfast with a small town mechanic. Vox placed a hand on his shoulder, her touch sending a tingle through his entire body. Do not despair, Jake Thompson. While we cannot stay, we can offer you a token of our gratitude. A gift that will change your life forever. Jake's eyes widened. Really? What kind of gift? Advanced alien technology. The secret to immortality. A signed photo of Elvis from his secret moon base. Zilith smiled enigmatically. Oh, Jake Thompson. Our gift is far more valuable than any of those trifles. We offer you knowledge. Jake's excitement deflated faster than a punctured souffle. Knowledge? That's it? I was kind of hoping for a cool alien blaster or maybe a hoverboard. Nixa giggled, a sound like wind chimes in a summer breeze. Not just any knowledge, silly human. We're going to download the complete history and technical specifications of every vehicle in the galaxy directly into your brain. Jake blinked then blinked again. I'm sorry, you're going to do what now? Vox stepped forward, holding what looked like a kaleidoscope crossed with a dental x-ray machine. It's quite simple, really. This device will rewrite your neural pathways, integrating millennia of intergalactic vehicular knowledge into your primitive homo sapien gray matter. You'll be the greatest mechanic in the universe. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Jake held up his hands, backing away slowly. Let's pump the brakes here, ladies. You want to rewrite my brain? That sounds less like a gift and more like a plot from a B-movie sci-fi flick. What if it turns me into a drooling vegetable? Or worse, what if it makes me like country music? Zilith placed a reassuring hand on Jake's shoulder, her touch sending shivers down his spine. Fear not, noble Jake Thompson. The process is perfectly safe. Well, mostly safe. There's only a 0.0001% chance of your brain exploding. Oh well, when you put it that way, Jake muttered sarcastically. Look, I appreciate the offer, but I think I'll pass. I've got a good thing going here with my junkyard. Sure, it's not glamorous, but it's honest work. Plus, I'm not sure the world is ready for a mechanic who can fix both a 72 Pinto and a Regellian warp drive. The aliens exchanged glances, their expressions a mix of confusion and disappointment. Nixa spoke up, her voice gentle. But Jake Thompson, don't you want to be extraordinary? to rise above the mundane existence of your fellow humans. Jake laughed, shaking his head. Ladies, I just helped fix a spaceship using the technical equivalent of have you tried turning it off and on again. I'd say that's pretty extraordinary for a Tuesday night in Rust Bucket, Arizona. Vox nodded solemnly. You speak wisdom beyond your years, Jake Thompson. Perhaps it is we who have something to learn from you. Now you're talking, Jake grinned. Tell you what, how about instead of rewriting my brain, you just leave me with a cool souvenir. Something to remember this crazy night by, and maybe your space phone number, in case I ever need to, you know, call for intergalactic roadside assistance. The aliens huddled together, whispering in a language that sounded like a cross between Elvish and a dial-up modem having a seizure. Finally, they turned back to Jake, their faces beaming. Zilith stepped forward, holding out what looked like a small, iridescent pebble. Jake Thompson, we offer you this quantum harmonic resonator. It may appear simple, but it contains the vibrational frequencies of a thousand alien worlds. Keep it with you, and it will bring you luck in all your mechanical endeavors. Jake took the pebble, turning it over in his hand. In the moonlight, he could see swirls of color dancing just beneath its surface. Wow, thanks. This is way cooler than a t-shirt that says my mechanic went to Alpha Centauri, and all I got was this lousy shirt. Nixa giggled again the sound making Jake's heart do a little flip. And as for our space phone number, as you so charmingly put it, she pressed a series of buttons on her wrist device, and Jake's ancient flip phone suddenly lit up with a series of symbols he'd never seen before. Then Nixa said with a wink, Now you can reach us anytime, but please, only for emergencies, or if you're really, really bored and want to chat about the cosmic nature of existence. Jake grinned, pocketing both the pebble and his phone. Ladies, it's been a pleasure. And hey, if you're ever in the neighborhood again and need a tune-up, you know where to find me. Just try not to crash land next time. The neighbors are already suspicious enough about all the weird noises coming from my junkyard. The aliens bowed in unison, a gesture that somehow managed to be both graceful and slightly ridiculous given their height. Farewell, noble Jake Thompson Zillith said. 
May your wrenches always be the right size and your check engine lights forever dim. With that, they climbed back into their ship. The hatch closed with a soft hiss, and moments later, the vehicle rose silently into the air. It hovered for a moment, the underside glowing with an ethereal blue light, before shooting off into the night sky faster than Jake's eyes could follow. As the last trace of the ship disappeared among the stars, Jake stood in his junkyard, the quantum harmonic resonator clutched in one hand and his flip phone in the other. He looked around at the piles of rusted metal and broken down cars, then back up at the sky. Well, he said to no one in particular, I guess I better update my business cards. Jake's Junkers and Auto Repair, serving satisfied customers from here to Andromeda, has a nice ring to it. With a chuckle, Jake turned and headed back to his apartment above the garage. As he walked, he couldn't help but whistle a jaunty tune. It sounded suspiciously like the alien ship's version of staying alive, but with a distinctly country twang. Just as he reached his door, his phone buzzed. Jake flipped it open, expecting to see a message full of indecipherable alien symbols. Instead, it was a text from Crazy Pete. Hey Jake, you're never gonna believe what I just saw in your junkyard. There were these three smoking hot alien babes and they. Jake snapped the phone shut, laughing. Oh, Pete, he said, shaking his head. You don't know the half of it. As he fell into bed, the events of the night replaying in his mind, Jake couldn't help but smile. Sure, he might not have accepted the alien's offer to become the universe's greatest mechanic, but he had something better a hell of a story, a cool alien souvenir, and the knowledge that somewhere out there in the vast cosmos, three beautiful alien women thought he was pretty darn special. Not bad for a Tuesday night in Rust Bucket, Arizona. The next morning, Jake woke up with a start, his alarm blaring the local country station. For a moment he lay there, blinking at the ceiling, wondering if last night had been some kind of bizarre dream brought on by too many late-night tacos and reruns of ancient aliens. But then his hand brushed against something smooth and cool on his nightstand, the quantum harmonic resonator. It was real. It had all been real. Jake sat up, running a hand through his messy hair. Well, I'll be damned, he muttered. Guess I better get ready for work. Never know when the next intergalactic breakdown might happen. As he got dressed, pulling on his oil-stained coveralls, Jake couldn't help but hum the alien version of Stayin' Alive. He made a mental note to start a new playlist top 40 hits from across the galaxy. Heading downstairs to his shop, Jake flipped the sign to open and settled in behind the counter. It wasn't long before the bell above the door jingled, announcing his first customer of the day. Morning, Jake said old man Jenkins limping in with his ever-present cane. That damn Chevy of mine is acting up again. Think you can take a look. Jake grinned, patting his pocket where the quantum harmonic resonator sat. Sure thing, Mr. Jenkins. Let's see what we can do. And hey, while I'm at it, how about I tell you a story? You're not going to believe what happened in my junkyard last night. As Jake launched into his tale, old man Jenkins' eyes grew wider and wider. By the time Jake finished, the old man was shaking his head in disbelief. Jake, my boy, he said, I think you've been out in the sun too long. Alien women in your junkyard. Next thing you'll be telling me is that Elvis is alive and living on the moon. Jake just smiled, twirling a wrench in his hand. Mr. Jenkins, after last night, I wouldn't rule anything out. Now, let's take a look at that Chevy of yours. I've got a feeling it's going to be running smoother than a Zanusian hover cruiser by the time I'm done with it. As Jake popped the hood of old man Jenkins' Chevy, he felt the quantum harmonic resonator warm slightly in his pocket. He reached in and touched it, and suddenly, the inner workings of the car seemed to make more sense than ever before. It was as if he could see the energy flowing through the engine, every component singing its own unique note in a grand mechanical symphony. Well, I'll be Jake muttered under his breath. Looks like those alien ladies left me with more than just a fancy pebble. With a newfound confidence, Jake set to work. His hands moved with an assurance he'd never felt before, tweaking and adjusting with precision that bordered on the supernatural. In no time at all, the Chevy's engine was purring like a contented kitten. Old man Jenkins's jaw dropped as Jake closed the hood. I've never heard her sound so smooth, he said in awe. What did you do, boy? Jake winked, tapping the side of his nose. Just a little alien magic, Mr. Jenkins. Nothing to worry about. As word spread about Jake's sudden increase in mechanical prowess, business at Jake's junkers and auto repair began to boom. 
people came from all over the county, bringing their most hopeless cases cars that other mechanics had declared dead and buried. But Jake brought them all back to life, each one running better than it had when it first rolled off the assembly line. Of course, not everyone was thrilled with Jake's success. Big Bob's Auto Emporium, on the edge of town, saw its customers dwindling as more and more people flocked to Jake's humble junkyard. Bob himself, a man whose mustache was almost as impressive as his waistline, decided to pay Jake a visit. It was a slow afternoon when the bell above Jake's door jingled, announcing Bob's arrival. Jake looked up from the carburetor he was reassembling blindfolded, just for fun, and grinned. Well, if it isn't Big Bob himself, what brings you to my humble establishment? Your fancy diagnostic computer finally give up the ghost. Bob's face turned an interesting shade of purple. Listen here, you little upstart, he growled, moustache quivering with rage. I don't know what kind of voodoo you're pulling, but there's no way a two-bit hack like you could suddenly become the best mechanic in the state. What's your secret? Some kind of illegal performance enhancers for cars. Jake leaned back in his chair, balancing on two legs. Now, Bob, you know a magician never reveals his secrets, but if you must know he leaned in conspiratorially. It was aliens. Bob's eye twitched. Aliens, he repeated flatly. Yup, Jake nodded, popping the pea. Three of them. Tall, beautiful with skin like starlight and hair like liquid silver. They came down in a spaceship, I fixed it for him, and they gave me the secret to universal automotive knowledge. You know, just your average Tuesday night in Rust Bucket. For a moment, Bob just stared at Jake, his mouth opening and closing like a fish out of water. Then, without another word, he turned on his heel and stormed out of the shop. Jake chuckled to himself. Well, that's one way to deal with the competition. As the days turned into weeks, Jake found himself settling into a new routine. By day, he was still the same old Jake, cracking jokes and fixing cars with a smile. But at night, when the shop was closed and the junkyard was quiet, he'd sit out under the stars, the quantum harmonic resonator in his hand, and listen. At first, he wasn't sure what he was listening for. But gradually, he began to hear. Something. Whispers from distant worlds, the hum of starships traversing the cosmos, the grand orchestra of the universe itself. And sometimes, just sometimes, he could swear he heard three familiar voices laughing and chatting as they zoomed from one end of the galaxy to another. One night, as Jake sat on the hood of an old Corvette, stargazing, his phone buzzed. He flipped it open to find a message composed entirely of those strange alien symbols. Somehow, though, he understood it perfectly. Hey there, noble Earth mechanic. Just checking in to make sure you haven't blown up your planet or anything. How's that quantum harmonic resonator treating you? By the way, we're passing through the Horsehead Nebula right now. The colors are amazing, wish you could see it. Maybe next time we're in your neck of the woods, we can take you for a spin around the solar system. Keep that wrench handy, Zilith, Nixa, and Vox. Jake grinned, shaking his head in amazement. He typed out a reply. Ladies, you wouldn't believe the week I've had. Turns out that little pebble of yours is better than a master's degree in mechanical engineering. Business is booming, and I'm pretty sure I've convinced the local auto parts store owner that I'm some kind of car whisperer. No planet explosions yet. But I did manage to make old man Jenkins's Chevy hover for a split second. Don't suppose that quantum harmonic resonator came with an instruction manual? Anyway, say hi to the Horsehead Nebula for me. And hey, if you're ever in the mood for the best damn oil change in the Milky Way, you know where to find me. Jake, as he hit send, Jake couldn't help but laugh at the absurdity of it all. Here he was, a small-town mechanic from Nowheresville, Arizona, casually texting with aliens as if they were old college buddies. But then again, maybe that was the point. In a universe as vast and weird as this one, maybe it wasn't so strange for a guy like him to befriend a trio of intergalactic travelers. Maybe the line between the extraordinary and the everyday was thinner than anyone realized. Jake pocketed his phone and the quantum harmonic resonator giving the old Corvette an affectionate pat as he slid off its hood. Tomorrow would bring new challenges cars to fix, customers to impress, and who knows, maybe even another alien encounter. But for now, he was content. As he headed back to his apartment, Jake looked up at the star-studded sky one last time. You know, he said to the cosmos at large, I think I'm starting to get why they call it humanity, fuck yeah. And with that profound or perhaps profoundly silly thought, Jake Thompson's small-town mechanic, friend to aliens, 
and unexpected recipient of cosmic mechanical knowledge went to bed, ready for whatever the universe might throw at him next.